beginner verbal tool that we use in classical guitar is the idea of positions. And it's a little bit tricky, so I want to explain it so that it's clear to you, so that it can be useful, but it also doesn't lock you into feeling like you're stuck to play in a particular position. Now, we have this beautiful fingerboard, which is a little bit elusive and maybe overwhelming in the beginner stages of learning. And we can play in all sorts of places. All of these notes are the same. I just played the same scale a few different times, but I'm playing in different positions. And these positions are really just a verbal guide as to where on the fingerboard we're playing. In the early stages of learning, we talk about first position and the one finger per fret rule. And that means that the first finger is playing on the first fret. The second finger is playing on the second fret. Third finger is playing on the third fret. And the fourth finger is playing on the fourth fret. So if you come across the note F sharp, for example, that is on the second fret of the first string, you'll play in first position with the second finger. Now this works very well for single line melodies. So that rule, that one finger per fret rule, where we keep them assigned to particular frets in first position, works very well up to a point. As soon as we need more than one note on the same fret, so for instance we have F, D played together, the guitar is a chordal instrument, this is going to happen all the time, then we have to use combinations of fingers like three and four perhaps, or two and three. And while we're still more or less in first position, obviously we're breaking that one finger per fret rule. So while this is a useful uh, way to think about the fretboard in the early stages, know that this rule gets broken like so many rules do, it gets broken very quickly in the learning process. The idea of position, however, is very useful to say, let's say we're having a lesson together and I said, let's play a C major scale in fifth position. That would be guided by your first finger. So your first finger in the left hand, if it's playing the fifth fret, and then the other fingers are more or less playing the following frets, six, seven, and eight, then you're in fifth position. Now, does that mean that you can't play a note on the 4th fret, or you can't play a note on the ninth fret. Not at all. That just means, really in a practical sense, that we're playing around that 5th fret with our 1st finger, but there's going to be a lot of variations within that. There I went up technically to 7th position, and I shifted down to 4th position, but it's not like we're keeping track of every little shift as we play around the guitar. Rather, it's a communication tool. So you can say, let's sight read this passage, but let's play it up in ninth position. And you'll find that certain positions have a really nice uh, way to, to find notes in certain keys. Second position, for example, really works well to read in D major. First position is great for C major. Fifth position is great for C major and A minor. So each position has an array of notes that are very accessible to the fingers, uh, given their assignment to one fret at a time. But I do want to just leave you with the clear idea that these positions are a great tool for communicating where, in what area of the guitar fingerboard we're going to be playing. But don't feel like you're locked in to say, uh oh, I can't play that note here because I have to play in fifth position, I'll have to stretch or something, or I can't play that note at all. Rather, just use it as a general guide of where we're going to be playing those notes at any given point on the guitar.